Hi, everyone. Co-founder of Sonify XP, and we're here for another episode of Who Ate All the Cookies? Today, I've got the pleasure of Stanley from Devante joining me. And the topic today is how do you use the data you already have? Devante are a Polish-based company that provides top-notch e-commerce solutions and product B and B2C segments. Devante is an enviable customer list and record of working with industry leaders like T-Mobile, Continental, and 3M who perceive technology as their key component to success. Stanley is a product strategist at Devante, and on a daily basis, his work is focused on the analytical and strategic part of e-commerce at Devante. And today, we're going to be talking about how do you collect data from your sites, and what happens if you think you have not collected any, and how do you use the data you already have, and why knowing what you want to achieve with your data is crucial for your success. Hey, Stanley, how's it going? Hey, man, good to meet you. Good to meet you too. I'm excited to kind of get cracking. I, I guess what would be great for uh, for our listeners if we get just a brief overview of yourself, hopefully I did you justice, but also a bit about uh, Devante would be great before we kind of get cracking with it. Okay, so uh, Devante is actually one of the very interesting products, let's say, because uh, we specialize in e-commerce. Our Everything we do is around e-commerce, but uh, as we were creating the services, uh, for our clients, we are, let's say, doing services and searching for waves. You can call it like this. So uh, what we are doing is alongside all the experience uh, to, when working with clients, we're searching for new trends. For example, when there was loyalty trend, we created product, open loyalty. Then there was a PWA trend so a few years ago, and we hopped on it and it turned out great to storefront. I, I mean, Probably a lot of people know it. And now we see a new way, new trend. And then that's, uh, let's say, data science and everything that's correlated with data. And we're also here as well. Good. Uh, and I guess you bring up a really interesting question, man. It's a, you know, it's a question I always speak about with, with CMOs at big brands. And that is, you know, where do you start from when it comes to kind of data science and, and collecting data? What if you're not collecting any data right now? You know, what, what, what are your kind of views? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very good question. When it comes to the collecting data and using it, it's actually not so complicated as people think it is. It's more about the culture of the company. I remember I once read about this uh, Amazon vision of the company maturity of the data. They divided into four segments. First of them was the companies who were, uh, so these are the companies who don't really know that they have the data. They really use it. They are just like, okay, it's probably somewhere there, but uh, never mind, right? Then, uh, the, these mature into something called data aware companies. And these are the companies that already know that, hey, we have, for example, this Magento and it has all this data. We have, let's say this Google Analytics. We have this uh, OMS that has all this data that, uh, about our business, but we're not really sure what to do with it. And, uh, when, but when you already have the knowledge and then you can kind of grow into third level, which is a company that's data influenced. And these, this is actually the first level where you get the business benefit uh, from the data. This is the level where you actually start making decisions in your company based on the data. For example, you, when you run a campaign, you check, okay, which one worked better? You do A-B tests. You check which segment has the, let's say, higher AOV or something like this. And the, when, when you're kind of on this, then you are making what you already did before, but you are using data to make it better. So that's nice. <laughs> but then there is also last level, which is, data driven and that's actually something i would love to introduce as a person because uh, in devante we are we're focusing on e-commerce hardly 
uh, everything we do is around e-commerce. It's either e-commerce or around e-commerce. Everything, that's, that's what we do. That's just what we do. And uh, I see the next, you know, there was web uh, 1.0, then there was a web 2.0. Uh, now there, there are people like talking about web 3.0, like there are the, and I believe uh, e-commerce right now is in this, let's say data 1.0, where people have Google analytics set up and uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, data, but only few of them actually do something meaningful, meaningful of them. And it's not really so, uh, so correlated with the company size. Sometimes it's 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 kind of random. And uh, I would love to see this data for 2.0, let's say in e-commerce, if that makes sense. The understanding of the data and let people know that actually just uh, just taking and analyzing data on your decision-making process is nice. It's it's a good move, of course. But if you base your strategy on the uh, data, then you can kind of come up with the new ideas and see what are the direction you might go that you never thought of before. No, uh, it's kind of cliche, easy. but you know, Amazon does it. So <laughs> probably yeah, that's uh, a good direction. Yeah, absolutely. And there's kind of a few things I want to kind of pick for that and i love i love your your kind of data 2.2.0 thing i think that's that's definitely i think how i feel about things right now as well i think the kind of the big thing and actually i was in a, a conference yesterday actually she's talking about is they're saying you know we have these systems that exist in our ecosystem whether it's like uh, magento google analytics like you mentioned or you know all these kind of and they and they have those systems in place right but i think kind of everyone's kind of looking to amazon and other businesses right now is how do we structure our team so we can move from that we have some data here to very much like you're saying that data driven approach to doing business to, to managing e-commerce and i think kind of what mm -hmm. we've seen is they're very much focused on the different product areas of their business right whether they've got like uh, a team focused on recommendations reviews my account check out all that stuff but obviously you know the e-commerce journey goes across all of those different facets right so when you're kind of speaking to e-commerce businesses and, and the brands you work with, you know, what, what is your kind of advice around how brands should structure the teams to really make the most out of this, you know, data 2.0 that you speak about? Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's actually a very good question because uh, I can tell you what I've seen and you what I think. So let's structure it like this. Uh, first, I've seen, uh, we've been, as I said, we kind of found this way of, let's say, data growing right now. And so what we are doing is we're growing new product right now. And as with the new product, I'm talking with a lot of people, with a lot of e-commerce to kind of, you know, see how, it, uh, what is the fit, just the sales activities, you can name it. And during these sales activities, I noticed uh, many companies where there was an analytical team at the very beginning, but it was very, very close to marketing. So let's say there was like a one data scientist, data scientist, you, you name it, just some kind of a expert, data expert around the performance area. And he helped in a marketing campaigns, right? So for example, how to better launch these campaigns. Sometimes you can even upload it and analyze uh, just that but then um for example i talked there were like one two people working with marketing but uh now as uh, we're having this let's say yearly status and uh, that we set up for to ourselves just to kind of catch up see what in companies i see that uh this um this small part of marketing organically grows in a company to let's say data science pro department itself so uh, what i've seen is people let's say business come to such a person with one request they see that it works they come one more time they see then they come more and more and more and more and quests start appearing and with time it just slowly 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 grows and uh 
in my opinion, and creating big department, like hiring 10 people straight off the bat or something like this. Okay, maybe that's a good idea. But uh, from what I've seen, what works, it's usually you get a person to handle this. You, the, you get some kind of a tools because at the end of the day, you need to use some kind of a tool. Really. And you get few tools that, uh, that are key to a person to handle it. And then you just organically grows. Absolutely. And I think um, there's always the question around, you know, kind of how you then start to model out that data. So obviously the marketeers are coming to this newly formed, I guess, data science team yes. that now exists in the organizations. But obviously they're having to handle a lot of this raw data that exists in all of these systems. Yes. How, how, how do you feel that brands should kind of go about starting to build out different models that they should kind of follow? But then how can you also communicate this back to marketing um, who might not necessarily be the most, I guess, knowledgeable about the inputs and processes that they go through? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so let me break it down. So first is how does the brand, uh, what kind of models does a brand need? And then how can marketing use this data science unit, right? These yeah, absolutely. Are, uh, okay, so first of all, when it comes to the uh, models that you gotta do, I've uh, uh, on our team, I uh, we have one guy, his name is Marcus, Shep, and uh, he's a very uh, wise guy. And he came to us from a, from a Germany, from a very big company, uh, like very, very big company. I, I think it's top three in the Europe in their industry. Oh, so nice. yeah, quite a big one. <laughs> and uh, when he came to us, he told me that um, when he worked there, the idea was that there was a lot of data. You know? There was all the meetings were looking like uh, they were creating uh, slide decks, like presentation for 300 slides that they talk through all the charts all, and everything. And the thing is, nobody really cares. I mean, nobody can comprehend such a amount of information. It's, it's just not humanly possible. And when you have such, such a, how would you name it? Like di diversification, let's say, yeah. of, the, yeah. of the focus, then uh, you don't really know where you should uh, put your attention, where you should work, what is important to you. And it was a very important lesson to me because when we started this whole movement, my idea was like, let's measure everything. Let's do everything. I want to know it, right? But then um, I kind of got this idea that, look, when it comes to the people in your organization, the actually... You have like two or three KPIs, no more. Like two or three main KPIs that you care about. And all the rest are like the, you know, sub, uh, say, different OKRs and stuff like this. So what, what you need to do in measuring in your organization, I would say uh, it depends to whom, right? Because the organization are the people basically. So it, it depends to whom uh, you need to do that. And then choose... That, uh, that you got to do. For example, in our tool, uh, Predicti, that we started to grow, as I said, at the beginning, like, whoa, it was crazy. Yeah, it had everything, you know? We were like, whoa, we can do this, we can do that. We were like, whoa, we had it all. But then as we spoke with people, we real realized that they don't really care about this. They don't really care about that. That there is actually one functionality that people care about and that's all we gotta do. And that's, that's the same, I see it the same way in the organization that you just gotta have like a two, three key, uh, let's say models at the beginning for you that you can work on. And you know, and then maybe slowly expand from this area. That's, that's, uh, is this the answer to your question? De definitely. I mean, I mean, to be honest, I'm really, I'm really enjoying this chat. I can probably chat you for hours about this to be fair. Um, <laughs> I guess that it, you bring up a good point, right? Is that, you know, you say these brands have 300 pages and, you know, I've seen it in Monday morning trading meetings. They bring like their pack data yeah. and they're sharing with the whole team. And I think 
you know, Amazon have really been focused on the inputs, right? So not necessarily what is the revenue, but are we doing the right things in terms of the inputs? Um, and I think, you know, the holy grail has always been for brands is, you know, can, what's my conversion rate? What's my average order value? You know, what's my total revenue? Um, you know, what's your view on, um, you know, how you should start to measure the activities you're doing, um, uh, you know, as a, as a business, but then also incremental stuff that you're working with your data science team on, you know, what should you be measuring? Is it still those kind of core KPIs or is there other kind of emerging things that you believe that, that brands should be focusing on? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, that's also a very good question. And uh, here, uh, the, the question in general, so I will try to, look, uh, if I give you the answer, I would say just uh, measure what, what you need, right? But that doesn't make sense. That's not helpful. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the Jerry Maguire so, <laughs> <money then. laughs> Yeah. So the thing is, when we, uh, I can tell you just what we experienced is when we um, chose to measure high level KPIs like uh, attribution, there, it's usually like attribution of a channel, let's say, right? Okay. Then uh, we measure that, uh, okay, this channel has the attribution like this, this channel has attribution like that. And it's a very good knowledge, but uh, it's not very actionable. You know, because uh, if you know that, oh, I don't, I don't want to, let's say that Facebook brings you more revenue than Google or whatever, right? That it has like a higher ROI, let's name it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In this case, then, uh, you know, okay, then I should more put more money, let's say in Facebook. But then you're like, but how? How do I actually do this? Because you can put the money in this channel in the wrong manner that won't actually increase, increase the revenue that you get so we were we came to the client with a very high level view and they were like well thank you that's not helpful at all <laughs> you're like all right all right we got to figure something and uh we just started chopping it like yeah look we let's go one level deeper so what's one level deeper okay maybe uh we don't want to look at the every single campaign because that's going to be like a lot of trouble and a lot of uh, error because these are statistical models. Uh, so uh, what can we do? Okay, let's maybe take a groups of uh, the ads and then figure out if that works. That's all right. Yep, that works. Everybody's happy and it's very actionable. So in my opinion, uh, maybe, you know, if we have a chat in one, maybe I will change. So, but from what I see right now, is uh, it's good to take the, highest level of the actionable insights so it's when it, when it's too high you can't do anything but then you just take a little just a little bit lower and then is the highest level and that's it absolutely and i i think there's always a huge trade-off in marketing between acquiring customers but then also managing um the customer life cycle as well are you trying to get those people back that really visited your brand to come and purchase from you and you know, are you are you really acquiring the kind of right customers for sure? We definitely we definitely see that. Um, so I guess we're running out of time, which is an absolute shame. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, I guess what is the one kind of takeaway that you give in terms of um, you know, if they're coming from the standpoint of they're just starting to use data, what is the kind of one takeaway that you kind of give to the audience? One takeaway. Uh, you can have three if you want, but I'm, I'm limiting you to one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I would say the most important things is, uh, look, you can take the data analysts, let's say, and this is, this is actually what I've seen, what I've heard, and uh, this is the example I'm going to give. Uh, you can work with data analysts, and uh, they can give you the results, which will be meaningless. So, for example, they will say that, well, if you spent more money on that, you are earn more. Like, yeah, thank you. So uh, I would just say, try to try to go into the data direction. Uh, do it wisely. <laughs> yeah, I do it wisely. Uh, think when it's actionable, when you can actually use it, and let us this be your first step. Don't do it all. Just one particular thing and make it actionable. Cool. 
Well, thank you so much, Danny. It's been absolutely awesome talking to you. Thanks so much for taking part in uh, Who Ate All the Cuckoos in this particular episode. Um, again, if any of you want to reach out to Danny, please do uh, via LinkedIn or email. Um, and Devon, they are a B2B and, and B2C e-commerce solution and product provider. Um, and they work with some awesome brands like T-Mobile, Continental and 3M. Thanks so much for your time. All right. Thank you. It's been a good chat and see you. See you.